Welcome back to Gaffer Salon. I'm John Roach. Thanks for coming back uh, today. Uh, we're going to dive into the new Nanlite Pavo Slim line. Now, look, it is very difficult and tricky to follow Andrew Locke and Gaffer and Gear uh, review. Uh, Andrew, in my book, is the gold standard in lighting reviews for a lot of reasons. Uh, not only is, is he fair and objective and he lays out uh, the pros and cons, uh, but he does extensive DMX queuing and color metrics uh, uh, data and information that's just so important to any of us that are trying to objectively evaluate how good this light is, is it for us, uh, et cetera. So I highly rec recommend you watch his review first, come back. Um, I'm gonna try to give you my take, my opinions uh, on the, uh, the Pavo Slim lineup. And I do have in-house uh, an accessory uh, that Andrew did not have, so we're gonna spend more time uh, looking at one of the accessories for the Pavo 120. Um, so to start out with, uh, you know, this is a very interesting uh, light that Nanlite has come out with. Uh, to me, it kind of bridges the gap between a heavy panel light and a lighter weight light mat, like a light mat or a, a Aperture Amaran F21C. Uh, the 21C is a good example because that's also a two by one RGBWW light uh, compares to the two by one, say, uh, Pavo Slim. Now, these are uh, heavier than, say, an Amaran. It's not a lightweight, sort of malleable mat. Uh, it is a harder panel light milled out of aluminum, uh, but it is razor thin, and all things considered, it is quite a lightweight light. I think the build, say, on the 120, this is probably maybe twice the weight, not quite twice the weight of uh, the a lighter weight matte light like an Amaran 21C. Um, so as I watched and looked over Andrew's reviews uh, of the, the bicolor and the full color, now I requested, I was only interested in the full color. Nanlite sent me uh, a couple of the 120Cs and uh, one of the 60Cs, and I've been playing around with them both here in the shop and I've had them out on set maybe two or three times. I've only had them for uh, two or three weeks at this point. Uh, and I have to say that uh, the build quality and the performance of these have been quite exceptional. And I'm, I'm very, very pleased to have them in-house. And I've been sort of putting them through the paces. Um, so just to dive in briefly uh, to what Andrew uh, made me aware of, which is the uh, quite a few substantial differences between the bicolor version of the Pavo Slim and the color version. And as Andrew has pointed out, it's not just that one is color and one is bicolor and everything else is the same. That is not the case. Uh, so very quickly, uh, the color version comes with a kind of unique pop-up softbox. Um, in addition to that, it comes with a uh, Maffer style clamp, allows you to mount your ballast to your stand. Uh, the color version comes with an additional back plate, which is essentially an aluminum uh, baby pin, a male baby pin, um, versus the female swivel clamp. Uh, now, this one comes with both bicolor and full color, uh, but the baby one only comes in the uh, color. Uh, and perhaps most importantly is in the ballast, in the color version, we have built-in CRMX. And that is an interesting step forward in my book for Nanlite. Uh, I'm really hoping that as, they, as Nanlite moves forward and tries to really push into the pro market a bit more uh, with these very affordable lights, uh, they will continue to put CRMX in every light uh, they put out. Um, so for example, if you had to buy a CRMX dongle for the bicolor light, Ballast, which doesn't have CRMX, the cheapest one out there right now is probably the Godox, and that's $189. Um, so I, I think if you look at the cost in U.S. dollars, uh, either the 60 or the 120, there's about a $200 price point difference uh, between the two lights. So for a small amount of money, for $200 more, you get a substantial set of additional features by going to the color. Uh, and that's over and above just the difference between one being uh, color and bicolor. Uh, so for me, the, the bicolor unit sits in a very awkward place uh, in this Nanlite Pavo lineup um, for a couple of reasons. One, I think we're in 2024. I think it's become an essential feature now that any bicolor light has green and magenta correction. Uh, we saw Nanlite themselves uh, relaunch 
with a Mark II version of the Forza 300 and the Forza 500 uh, by adding green and magenta correction. And that's the Achilles heel, right, of any bicolor light, is they can calibrate it to, to be fairly accurate, say at 3256, so it's not skewing uh, magenta or green, uh, but somewhere along that daylight tungsten um, uh, continuum in Calvin, as you get down to 2700, frequently bicolor lights shift a bit green, sometimes substantially green. Other points they might shift magenta, and there's no way to deal with that unless you add green and magenta correction into the light, like they did on the Forza 500 by, um, etc. So, in addition to that, you've got all these differences. You've got CRMX in the ballast, you've got the pop up diffuser, you've got some extra clamps and plates. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure what Nanlite's intention was on this bicolor model. I think if it was an identical feature set and they all included the same thing and you had a bicolor light with green and magenta and a $200 price point, there would be some good argument for some people to save the 200 bucks and go with the uh, bicolor unit only, even if it, they didn't even add the CRMX in. Um, to me, that might have made more sense. So. I think given what they presented, I, I'd be hard pressed to recommend anyone to go to the bicolor light. Uh, I mean, if money was really, really a tough issue, maybe that would make sense. But just even in resale value alone, I think uh, the color version would, would maybe fare a bit better. That's pure speculation on my part. Um, so to dive into some of these features that we're getting on the color, I, I think um, until I watched Andrew's review, I didn't realize the bicolor just came with a standard softbox poly skirt that you Velcro on the back and then you add your diffuser. So for me, I thought this was one of the heroes of the Pavo Slim Light. Um, and that is a pop-up or pop-out uh, softbox. And they've designed it so it's got some armature wire in here. So it gives it its shape. Uh, and then there are two Velcro tabs. Um, two little blue Velcro tabs. So the principle being, you can just push this down, right? Collapse it onto your light, uh, Velcro the tabs to the back of the light, and then this whole pop-up softbox uh, will collapse and go right into your case with it mounted on the light. And then when you pull the light out, you pop it out and it's ready to go uh, quick as that. Um, so to me, that, that's quite a nice option. And they still maintain the Velcro diffusion. So it comes with the standard sort of heavy white magic clothy-ish, um, Chimera white-ish diffusion, and then something along the lines of a half grid. Uh, and of course, since it's Velcro, you can have custom diffusions made up, uh, et cetera. So um, to me, that was a great selling point. Um, and it, it comes with a, a reasonably decent, it's not a snap grid style, but a reasonably decent uh, grid. Um, my only complaint about this is I wish it had a couple more Velcro points. Uh, to mount, but that's something I could add myself if uh, after a period of time I feel like it needs a few more. Um, having CRMX in the ballast is just critical. I, I, I'm really hoping Nanlite moves forward with CRMX in all their lights. Uh, it is really essential to all of us now. We're always working in blackout or uh, on, on gaffer's control or what have you. Um, so that is a really great uh, additional option that Nanlite has given us. Uh, I don't have many complaints uh, about the color version as I've had it out. Uh, it's performed very well. I think uh, the hero um, of these panels is it's uh, both a softbox and it's a native 60 degree somewhat spotty beam angle. Now it's not spotty in the way of Vortex or an Airy X's or a Sumo light uh, in a really tight 20 uh, punchy throw, but I think 60 degrees is enough of a punchiness out of a little panel light that it can become very useful. And I found myself using uh, this naked in, in a number of different ways. Um, now, one thing that Andrew pointed out uh, that was lacking, uh, kind of one of his cons, was the lack of any kind of a uh, safety mount point. Uh, when you're rigging this light overhead or what, uh, whatever. Um, and what I, uh, I've known this because I have some other lights that are similar. Um, now I pulled this off, it's really tiny, hard to see, but it's a little um, essentially eye bolt with a quarter 20. And this is off my Hudson Spider. This is a Hudson Spider one uh, off my Mozzie light. Um, but you can get a standard eye bolt with a quarter 20 thread. Uh, and the nice thing about uh, both the Pavo 120 and the 60 is each of the four corners has uh, quarter 20 threads uh, that are accessible from front 
or back. Now, of course, most times you'll have a soft box, so you won't be able to get to it from the front, but in the back, you can just screw in uh, one of these little uh, eye bolts, uh, and then you have a safety point. You can put trick line or an airline safety cable or what have you, uh, and then you're good to go. So uh, it won't fit back in the case uh, with this on, but just adding uh, a couple of these to each of my cases, I, I know I always have one or two safety points that I can mount uh, to the quarter 20s on the light. So that's been my solution for the lack of a uh, safety uh, catch or safety point um, on these uh, Pavos. Um, I have very few complaints, uh, very few cons. Um, this is either a pro or a con, depending on where you land. Uh, it's a relatively short header cable. I don't know what this is, 10 feet or, I'm not sure, but it's a relatively short header cable. I have some friends that really like this because they're running gun guys and they're setting it up always on a C-stand. They're never putting it on menace arms or rigging it in the grid and they hate having all this extra cable. Uh, so sometimes people really like these. I prefer something that's more like 25 feet. Uh, and it's not on the Nanlite website yet, but they are coming out. I want to say it's a seven meter cable. Um, uh, it's in route to me, but it didn't come in time for the review. Um, so that'll allow me to uh, have a nice lengthy cable when I have it on the end of a menace arm or up in the grid, uh, et cetera. And that's a, an optional uh, accessory. Um, the one big complaint, and Andrew talks about this all the time, and uh, I'm in 100% agreement with him, is these inexpensive PVC AC cables are a pain in the butt. Uh, they are a constant annoyance, even in warm weather. Here in the shop, it's, I don't know, 60 degrees right now. It's not terribly cold, um, but this has memory. It, 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 you know, God forbid you're in the cold. If you're below freezing, this becomes hard and brittle. It becomes almost impossible to coil. If you have it laid out, you're gonna struggle with it. Um, even in warmer weather, it sometimes will not lay flat when you run it across the floor. It still has a coil. Uh, it's a trip hat. It's, these are a nightmare. So I'm hoping, uh, and look, Nanlite isn't the only one that does this. A lot of the value brand manufacturers are doing PVC AC power cables. Um, uh, Aperture has done it, or Amaran, uh, Teletech. There are a number of people that have done, and I really hope everybody realizes how bad these are and goes, look, charge me another 40, 50 bucks, whatever it is, to upgrade to a nice quality silicone cable that coils properly, that lays flat. Um, anyway, it, it's an annoyance, uh, but it's a relatively small point. Uh, it's not specific to this light, it's just in general. So this light, uh, I think overall is, is quite well made. Uh, that's really the only complaint I can think of. Um, and just to review some things that Andrew mentioned, uh, one of the heroes of the design of this, I think, is the multiple points uh, for rigging your back plate. Uh, that you're not stuck with just the center mount uh, positioning. You can move it off to the edge, which allows you to articulate it um, in a number of different ways when you're rigging. Uh, that's all uh, really great. Um, so I think, you know, if you look at uh, what's happening in color metrics, uh, these lights have really good color metrics. I think you'd be hard pressed to tell a whole lot of difference these days between a number of these value brand manufacturers. If you look at the Aperture Amaran 21 or 22C, the Pavo 60C, the Pavo 120C, um, they're all very similar color metrics, a very good uh, color metrics. So, um, I'm happy to have this in, in the inventory. Uh, as Andrew, you know, Andrew pointed out, uh, he owns a few lights that have maybe sexier color metrics. Um, I think we're seeing uh, some experimentation uh, with people adding violets and other emitters and trying to boost uh, the SSI value. Uh, we sometimes see lights that might have the same TM30 scores, very similar CRIs, but the SSI uh, might be higher and better uh, and giving you a little bit better spectrum, um, so you're getting a score of 90. Uh, an example of a light like that might be Zolar uh, Blade. Andrew also reviewed that. That has very high scores. Um, but a number of these RGBWW lights, uh, like the Amaran, 
uh, like uh, the Pavo, um, they all have reasonable, uh, and even the light mass spectrums, uh, they all have reasonable color metrics, um, decent SSI. I think as we move forward in the next year, two, three years, we're going to start to see a push into getting better and better spectrum, uh, and we're going to see better and better uh, SSI scores. We're already relative to TM30, usually seeing 94 to 96 in most of our, our matte lights. Um, so I think all these manufacturers are going to you know, keep uh, stepping up the game. Um, so the only other thing I wanted to talk about was the accessory that Andrew did not have, uh, which was the um, uh, dual mounting bracket to mount two Pavo 120s. Uh, either horizontally in a four by one fashion or stacked vertically in a two by two fashion. Um, and so we'll, we'll take a look at that setup. Is the dual mounting bracket for putting two Pavo 120s together to form a four foot by one foot uh, soft panel light. Um, so this is essentially a bracket, right, that connects the two 120 Pavos, either the color or the bicolor. In this respect, they're identical. Uh, and you put a poly skirt, which comes in the kit, and you add uh, one of the two diffusions. It comes with the same uh, identical diffusions that the pop-up uh, or the, on the bicolor version, that, that softbox. Uh, now, the interesting thing about this, I think, is the kit, which comes in this bag, uh, has two different permutations. It has the four foot by one foot, but it also comes with a secondary bracket. And this is for when you want to stack the 120s on top of each other. So you're essentially making a two foot by two foot uh, panel softbox. Right? So I thought I'd try the two by two. Um, it is essentially the same kind of setup. It repurposes the uh, poly skirt. It just overlaps here and it overlaps here. Uh, and then it Velcros, but it seems to maintain its shape uh, quite well. Uh, and it's exactly the same kind of uh, setup in the back. Uh, of course, you need to uh, have your power cables on the outside, either on the uh, uh, left and right edge or the top and bottom, and then these two mount uh, in the same fashion. Uh, and roughly same setup time as the four by one. I guess the, the big con of this setup would be uh, it's a time suck, right? It takes a while to build this in particular if you have the C version, which comes with the pop-out softbox, you have to remove this first from your two units. So you have to peel the Velcro off, remove these, uh, then you can attach your bracket, then you add the poly skirt, then you add the diffusion, then you add the egg crate if you need it. Um, so that is a bit of a time-consuming process. There's just no way around it. Uh, on the plus side, I think if you're a smaller owner operator, traveling DP, you're going out with four, five, six lights, and you've got two Pavo 120s, for example, this little kit does allow you to, in a modular way, have some other options. So you, one day you need maybe a two by two key light for a little interview. So you can build that relatively quickly, have a nice two by two source. Another day, maybe you need a four by one. Another day you want to use the two lights separately. Uh, maybe as a key and a fill, or for whatever reason. Uh, so you, the modularity, I think, is nice. Uh, so I discovered on the Pavo 120 kit, there's actually a lot of extra room in the kit. So you can take the entire contents of the dual bracket um, bag and stick it into a 120 kit. So your light rides up here, uh, your ballast, your uh, two back plates, your Maffer uh, stand clamp, uh, your short header cable, the AC power supply, there's room for an extra long header, uh, and then the entire uh, dual mount is in here. So you've got your uh, poly skirt, your egg crates, your different diffusions, and then underneath all this, uh, you've got your egg crate for the regular uh, Pavo pop-out box. You've got your two brackets for the 4x1 or the 2x2 setup, the extra diffusion for the standard pop-out. Uh, and everything fits in here. Um, so I'm always trying to figure out, you know, interesting ways either to modify my lights or to, um, uh, you know, expand their use. Uh, so often with a lot of my, whether they're matte lights or panel lights, uh, I usually go out and spend some extra money to have some custom diffusions made because I find different DPs kind of gravitate to different uh, diffusions that they really like. Uh, oftentimes it might be um, unbleached muslin uh, or bleached muslin even. Uh, sometimes it's a half soft frost. So eventually I'll have made up for these 
some additional diffusions just to increase uh, you know, my inventory of diffusions for each of my Pavo lights. Um, and then another thing, uh, I would say it was about five years ago, Jacob uh, Ballinger from the Lightbridge asked me to go do a, a CRLS demo for Manuel Billiter um, over at Panavision. And Manuel was prepping for another season of the Gilded Age, uh, or actually it was Jessica Jones at that point. And later he went on to do Gilded Age, which my wife directed. And so they worked together and I was able to see some of the things that Manuel was doing with CRLS and soft panel lights. Man Manuel was one of the very first people to start to use Airy S60s, a soft panel light, into a CRLS. And if you've ever seen the Gilded Age, it's just a gorgeously lit period piece. And so he was getting these beautiful pushes of natural daylight uh, coming into his sets from custom-made huge 8x8 CRLS panels that the grips rigged. Um, so I thought, you know, uh, I'm doing that right here uh, with a little Pavo 60C into a 50 centimeter uh, CRLS. Now our ratios aren't right. I've got my shop LED lights on, which don't have the best color metrics. And I've got a little Pavo Slim giving me kind of a hard push here. I think if we had the ratios right, and maybe if we were in a little bit better uh, environment, like a house and near a window, whatever, uh, this would become very interesting. Uh, it's really important with CRLS, you know, those ratios have to be right or it looks fake, right? But just to give you a sense, it's pretty easy. I just rigged this quickly. I, I could have found a better way to do it off, but just off one stand, rigging a small Pavo 60, pushing it into a CRLS panel, gives you a really nice, more specular, this really sort of transforms the quality of light coming out of a relatively diffuse panel. Now this is less diffused than say an Airy S60. This is natively a 60 degree spot, right? Um, but it, you know, it has enough punch for a small, little setup in a small room. Maybe you're trying to mimic some uh, natural daylight coming through a window. I mean, this could work really, really well. Um, this is a number two. It's a little harder, a little punchier. Again, our ratios aren't right. We could step down to a three, which would be a little softer. Um, but I like to experiment with panel lights, with soft lights now uh, into CRLS. Um, and I think this, surprisingly, fair amount out of this little 60C. Um, so by and large, I'm, I'm finding these lights really great. I, I was talking to Ken Soddy, uh, gaffer in Belgium, and he immediately purchased a couple of these uh, 120Cs and was just thrilled with the, the quality of the light and the price point. And when he started showing, around, showing them around to his fellow colleagues in Belgium, they ran out and bought them because uh, I think it really is an exceptional value. And I think not only with Nan light, uh, but I think with a lot of these value brands, we're starting to really see them up their quality, up their game, up their build quality. And the color metrics and the performance of these lights are really getting better and better. Now we've got built-in CRMX. That was not something Nanlite really has been doing uh, a lot of. I mean, Nanlux certainly, and we've got Nanlite and Nanlux. Nanlux, Nanlux being, you know, quote, the professional brand and Nanlite somewhere floating at the lower end of the pro market, the consumer content creator market, et cetera. So the introduction of CRMX, I think, is really encouraging to me. Uh, they're, I think they're really aiming these lights at working professionals. Um, and I think generally we're starting to see the difference between color metrics on the high-end lights and the low-end lights. That gap is rapidly closing. Um, what we're starting to see is the devil's in the details, right? So when you start to get to more expensive lights, there's a lot more R&D, a lot more engineering put into very specific areas of the light, like, for example, low-end dimming, low-end color metrics performance, particularly low-end dimming. That's what we saw with the Airy Orbiter. Uh, I think we're going to see that with the Airy X. Um, if you just do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Airy X versus maybe a cheap light, you might find its basic color metrics are going to be very similar. Uh, but as you start to dive into the details and specialty operations of that light, when you need to do a crossfade from 2% to 6%, some of these lower end lights are just not going to be anywhere near as capable. But out of the box at 3256, you're going to see, I think, by and large, similar uh, color metrics. So it's interesting. Things are rapidly changing. 
Uh, anyway, that's my uh, feeling about these Pavos. I'm excited to get them out. I've only had them out uh, one or two jobs so far. Uh, used them a couple times as keys, a couple times as edges, a couple times as backlights. Um, and they've <clears throat> performed flawlessly. And I'm excited to have them in the inventory. So uh, I would encourage you to uh, try to get a demo, test them out, see what you think. But at this price point, I'd say these are an exceptional value. My advice would be to stay away from the bicolor. I really see no point in going to that unit, given everything that this 120C and this 60C uh, pack into both the kit, the build, the pop-up softbox, the CRMX, uh, the additional plates and accessories. To me, it's a no-brainer. Anyway, thanks for watching.